So in the next series of videos, we're going to talk about how we represent uh, data in Bioconductor. And first, we're going to talk a little bit about the basic data types we think of uh, when we think about uh, uh, experimental data. In Bioconductor, we tend to think of data as consisting of, as being of one or three different types. There's experimental data, which is data uh, that we have collected with some high throughput experiment, for example, sequencing or microarray experiment. And uh, the data typically is uh, either sequence reads or line sequences or numerical measurements of, uh, say, the expression of a gene. Together with the experimental data, we have metadata on the experiment. Metadata on the experiment is things such as it's kind of annotation on the experiment. It's uh, telling us uh, more information about what do these numbers actually mean and what do they come from. So an example is information about the samples that was profiled in the experiment. For that a given sample is male or female, uh, the age, the ethnic origin of the, of the person, and so on. And finally, we have annotation data. And annotation data is data we grab most often from big public databases that gives context to the experiment. It could be information about conservation, it could be inf information about nearby genes or uh, local CBG content. Besides the, different data, the three different data types, we also have different levels of data. And these days, when we do a high throughput experiment in biology, we typically start off with some really raw, unprocessed data that's typically really big. In this case here, we show a, a little bit of, of a few reads from a next generation sequencing experiment. And through a process of, uh, called pre-processing, we take this raw data and we transform it into uh, somewhat more tidy and interpretable data. We typically go through some steps where we try to normalize the data to make uh, different samples more comparable. And in this sometimes rather long process, we may have several intermediate products like raw reads versus aligned reads versus summarized reads in a high throughput experiment. Uh, finally, when we have pre-processed the data, we do uh, some kind of statistical analysis. That's where a lot of the uh, analytical labor uh, uh, happens. And we end up with some results, which is basically what are our conclusions of this experiment. So the way we uh, represent data in, in, in Bioconductor is we have a series of data containers. And that's an important concept. We have this great uh, retrospective quote from Robert Gentleman, who created Bioconductor. He also was one of the two co-creators of R, uh, talking about how uh, this concept of data containers have been an important thing in the success of Bioconductor. He says here in the quote that um, we may have uh, different ways of uh, getting the data. We may have different microarray vendors or different types of experiments. But at a certain point in time, if we do an experiment where we measure gene expression, we end up with some data on the expression of some genes. And if we have a common data container for that type of data, we can then create analytical tools that just works in this common data container and it's gonna make life a lot simpler for us. So what he's saying is, a way of representing that is in, in this little scheme, where we have, we imagine that we have different ways of getting the raw data. For example, we, uh, may have different vendors uh, in different experiments. This is between experiments. We may have different vendors, uh, different microarray vendors that represent the data differently. We may have different uh, uh, sequence companies that gives you a, uh, that, 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 that means that we have to pre-process the data, the data slightly differently. And typically the pre-processing we do is tightly integrated with the specific type of uh, technology we're using. Uh, I'm not just saying sequencing technology, but I'm also saying sequencing instrument. But at a certain point in time, uh, the pre-processing result in, in data that comes into a common data container. And from this path on, from this, from this time on, uh, we don't have to remember too much about where did the data really come from. That gives a lot of power. It means that the analysis step that we have here on the, on the slide uh, can be joined between these different vendors. This is going to be a little bit more clear with the examples uh, we have in the following.